Hello, and welcome to Controversies in Church History, the podcast that takes you through the most interesting and controversial events in the life and history of the Roman Catholic Church. Welcome once again. My name is Derek Taylor, your host for the podcast. Thank you for joining me. Um, blessings to all of our listeners out there. Um, thank you all for listening. Thank you for supporting the podcast. Thank you to all our patrons on Patreon who support me in this. I very much appreciate it. Uh, remember, you can find Controversies in Church History uh, on social media, on the web at churchcontroversies.com, on uh, social on Facebook, on Twitter, on YouTube, and also on Patreon, as I mentioned before. And uh, all of our uh, archive of uh, episodes are free and available um, not, uh, uh, on Spotify, uh, Spotify for Podcasters. You can find all of those there, uh, as well as on, on YouTube. Um, you, you will get bonus content if you become a patron on Patreon, um, which I mentioned because upcoming soon for patrons, you will have another a short uh, bonus episode coming that is coming. But for this episode, uh, a little short, I don't know if you call it a pop episode. I've been wanting, meaning to do more of this. But today, as I record this, this is August 9th, 2023. And that date should strike a chord for those of you out there who know history, because that is the day, the second of two of the of two atomic bombs were dropped. Uh, the second were dropped on Japan uh, by the United States to end World War II. The second is first one was dropped on the city of Hiroshima. The second one was dropped on the city of Nagasaki. And um, that is the topic, basically. Well, sort of related to the topic today of this little uh, short episode. I'm um, calling it uh, Anscom Truman and the Bomb. And I want to talk about this, um, the historical, the moral question of, of the bombing of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. I sometimes, uh, we'll get this in a second, most of you are doing this probably know who Elizabeth Anscombe was. Elizabeth Anscombe was one of the most important philosophers, period, of the 20th century. Taught it, um, I don't know, have it in front of me, I think, I think it was Cambridge. <laughs> I think she was at Cambridge, yeah, I, get, I get killed for this, not knowing this. Uh, no, she was actually, well, I mean, it is. Well, she was at, yeah, okay, so she was, uh, she did uh, later in her life serve at uh, Cambridge, but I think she was a, a research fellow at Oxford when this happened. But, if you don't know, uh, Anscombe was also a uh, convert uh, in her teens, I think, to Roman Catholicism, and so she's a big defender of Catholic moral theology. She defended uh, to her colleagues uh, at Cambridge and elsewhere uh, the church's... Um, Prohibition on, on artificial contraception. So, famous philosopher, very big in Catholic intellectual circles. And if you don't know the story, you know, Truman, of course, dropped the bomb. And I have all this on the brain, by the way, because I just saw the movie Oppenheimer. Um, wrote a review of it, not for, um, it's not really a, it's not really related to Catholic stuff. But I wrote a review of it for my, uh, my uh, sub stack, which is my sort of non-Catholic, where I write about things, non-Catholic venue, uh, which you can go read if you want. It's called Peers Unbound. Uh, it's free, the, the review. But it got me thinking about this, the moral question. And um, if you don't know, that the, the, the tale goes like this. Anscombe was a research fellow at Oxford in 1956. Uh, her college, I believe, at Oxford uh, was granting or did grant to Truman an honorary doctorate. doctorate and she, she opposed this. She objected. I think she filed some sort of formal thing. Uh, it came to nothing. He got the degree, which basically said he was not fit for fit to receive the degree because it basically he had committed mass murder by dropping the atomic bombs. And so, uh, and I um, actually wrote a pamphlet in, in, in defense of her position. And so that's kind of what I want to talk about here today a little bit. And like, get your, uh, other pur uh, pur purpose of part of this, I'll go through this in a few minutes, uh, is to get your take on this. I'm going to post a, uh, a poll uh, and on Spotify, and if you're not used to if you're not used to listening on Spotify, go over to, to Spotify for podcasters and try to answer the poll. I want to get your opinion on this because this is the big question I'm going to ask. She she literally says that uh, Truman was a mass murderer, and so that's that's going to be the question. I'll, I'll give you a poll, and I don't know how I'm going to phrase it quite yet, but it'll be up there as soon as I get this thing up there. You know, do you agree? And if you not, if you if so, why? And if if not, why not? Uh, what was he if he wasn't a mass murderer? Just to go through this real quickly, it's not a it's not a big, you know. Uh, again, most of I'm assuming there are a lot of Catholics who who think she was right. And by the way, I generally think that the bombing of Hiroshima and and uh, Nagasaki was intrinsically evil. That's the basic idea. It's always wrong to intentionally murder innocent people. 
But well, I'll get into this in a second, some of the things that I have to say about this. But her critique's very simple, is that if you don't know, before the Potsdam Conference in, um, in July, I don't know, July of 1945, this is when the Allied leaders Truman, Stalin, and Churchill met, and they were talking about things, um, the Japanese reached out to the United States uh, to try to negotiate a surrender. And the United States sent them this really vague demand for unconditional surrender, which actually include, included a bunch of other things, but all amounted to basically totally, totally make yourselves, you know, subject to our, our power, basically. It's a, abs- a call for absolute sort of abject surrender. And um, from what I understand, I, what I read in her pamphlet, actually, the one thing, the one hang-up was the the um, the Japanese wanted their emperor to remain in place, and uh, the United States said no. And this is the first part of her critique: is that this whole idea of unconditional surrender was wrong. Uh, if you give them that one condition, they would have probably surrender. Um, the second part of it, I already mentioned uh, her her critique, is that intentional killing killing of civilians is intrinsically evil. That you can't do evil that good may come of it. It's a fairly standard moral axiom. And that because they didn't need to drop a bomb to get them to surrender, because they intentionally they bo- dropped they intentionally dropped bombs on cities where they knew it, the civilians would be killed. It wasn't as if it was a a matter of you know picking military targets and some civilians getting killed by accident. It was a matter of intentionally committing, committing civil, civilians killing civilians. That therefore the acts of dropping the bombs were mass murder, and that Truman was a mass murderer. And the defense of Truman kind of goes like this. Um, the first thing is people dispute is well the Japanese were not going to surrender, that they've um, that they were you know fanatics that they were you know whatever and they would not surrender, um, those sorts of things. This has been this is by the way I don't know the historical you know backdrop to this. My understanding is this has been disputed that uh, the United States was kind of overdoing how fanatic they might be, but that's one of the, one of the considerations. They they simply wouldn't. Surrender. The reply to that, by the way, from people like Anscombe is, well, they would have surrendered if you hadn't made the demand for unconditional surrender. Uh, second part of the defense basically goes, this is usually the one people most bring up, is that the bomb saved lives. That is to say, an actual invasion, military invasion of the Japanese islands would have been much more costly in terms of lives than the bombs dropped, and therefore it was necessary for that, for that reason. And so the basic conclusion of this is that it was necessary, that it was morally necessary, or sometimes you'll hear people say it was the lesser of two evils, and I guess you could put it that way, and that's the defense of Truman in the United States. And like I said before, I, I, I tend not to, um, well, before I get into my own, my own takes on this, just a couple of things. One, historical considerations here. I've been to, uh, when I used to live in the KC area, I've actually been to the Truman Library, uh, in uh, in uh, Independence, Missouri, and they they have a thing on this at that uh, that institution. And one of the things that was very much in the minds of people like Truman and the military brass in the United States is they clearly wanted to clearly part of the rationale for dropping the bomb was to frighten the Soviets. Um, they wanted them to know not only that they had the bomb, but they were willing to use it. Uh, there is this sense, and if you know Truman became a Cold War, you're right. He was a Cold War Democrat. They wanted to get tough with the Soviets. They thought they needed to get tough with the commies. And therefore, that's basically one of the reasons. I think it's one of the things that pushed him uh, to do this. If you saw if you saw the film Oppenheimer, and this actually gets him, this actually happened, by the way. Oppenheimer went to the White House after the war, and you know he, Oppenheimer had moral qualms about this. And he told Truman when he met him, he said, I, President, I believe I have blood on my hands. And, and Truman kind of snapped at him. He says, well, you didn't drop the bomb. I did. I did that. I'm responsible. And then when he left, apparently told one of his aides, "Don't ever, don't ever send that, you know, chicken, you know what, uh, into me again." Uh, Oppenheimer, with his his silly moral qualms, was kind of a sissy, and that Truman was a tough guy who would go drop the bomb. And so there's definitely that sensibility among uh, among American American military leaders and the president. Obviously, they wanted to show how tough they were. Uh, second thing is, and I got this from specifically from. Uh, the Truman Library when I was there is that seemed like a lot of military leaders this was almost like the dropping of the bomb, and not even the dropping of the bomb but their attitude toward Japan was in talking talk, why would you want why would you insist on unconditional surrenders there was partly, I would call it a, mot- a motivation for revenge I remember the Japanese had attacked us the Japanese of course treated prisoners of war exceedingly brutal, br- brutally 
I remember I remember the uh, Bataan um, death march where a bunch of American soldiers died. Pretty much all the uh, uh, Allied prisoners of war suffered mightily at the hands of the Japanese. You're probably familiar with their occupation of China and the um, the rape of Nanking, which I, I caught myself. Sometimes you get into this, this, this line of work about history, you use the word so-called. There's nothing so-called about the, what the Japanese did to Nanking. They literally raped tens of thousands of women uh, in an effort to terrorize the population. It is horrific what they did there. And so there is that sort of sensibility um, uh, involved in all this. Uh, and just a couple of things about Enscom. when we talk about this. When she, had, when she was talking about this, she, you know, she wasn't suggesting Truman should be prosecuted or anything. She was just objecting to the degree. She did not want her college to grant the degree to him. It was a moral objection, not a legal one. And then one weird thing about the pamphlet, if you read the pamphlet, it's just weird about it. She spends a, I, I, yeah, maybe a good third of the pamphlet uh, trying to refute pacifism. And I guess maybe because she would be accused of being a pacifist for some reason for not wanting to drop the bomb. Uh, which is an interesting aside, you know, about this whole debate is that I, I don't know. It's kind of interesting. Well, anyway, um, a few things before I, I let you go and you can go, you know, fill out the, uh, fill out the, uh, the poll, take the poll or not. But a couple of considerations, my takes. The first thing here is that I, I think... In the abstract, it's pretty obviously wrong. <laughs> you just incinerated a bunch of, you know, 100,000, however it was, 150,000 non-combatants in a war intentionally. Think in, in isolation, I think Anscombe says that in the pamphlet. In isolation, it's pretty simple, pretty simple moral calculus. However, my one objection in all this, because, again, you have Catholics will defend Truman, and a lot of people outside the church defend Truman, but I think the one criticism I have of Truman's critics is probably this. And one is that in the abstract, it's very easy to make that call. Being a professor of philosophy at Cambridge, it's pretty easy. However, being head of the United States Armed Forces, being a general, being the president, having gone through, you know, what, four years of brutal war, five years of brutal war against the Japanese. I have to admit, I probably would have wanted some revenge if I'd been been in his position. I probably want to do it just to... I would have been real... It, it, put it this way, it's easy when you're not responsible for You're looking at your men and say, these people have tortured our prisoners, they've done all these things to us, they've launched kamikaze pilots at us, they've destroyed, they killed civilians uh, at Pearl Harbor, but we're not going to... We're going to treat them with kid gloves. Again, I'm putting it in the most prejudicial way, because, I, but I'm not saying it's right, it's definitely wrong, but I would have at least been tempted by that the desire for revenge is wrong <laughs> in that situation. Um, but it is natural. It is natural. People are subject to those sorts of things. And that's why I, yeah, Truman, you know, Truman definitely was wrong. I don't, I can't sit here and like get angry at Truman. I know that's, maybe that sounds bad, but it's hard for me to like someone who's not in his position to go, he's the most evil piece of like, it's different than like Hitler. It's just different in that regard. Even if the actions, by the way, they are on the same spectrum. Uh, there's no doubt about this. One of the things you don't know, if you don't know, if you're listening to this, you've just heard about the atom bombs. Both the United States and the British had bombed civilians intentionally before. The United States had firebombed Tokyo, killed, killed almost as many civilians as the, the, the H-bombs, the, the atom bombs did. And, of course, the, the, uh, the British, uh, you, know, mur you know, bombed a bunch of civilians in the city of Dresden during World War II. So they'd already done some of this. Again, two wrongs don't make a right, but it's already they'd already sort of crossed that line in a lot of ways, and so that's that's kind of where I'm at with this. I'm not I'm not totally sure about that. Maybe I should hate him. I don't know. I don't know. And um, I guess the thing that that's kind of the thing I struggle with. I, I just think it'd be hard in that situation to be totally detached in the way that Anscombe could afford to be in her uh, in her critique of Truman. And it's kind of a weird thing otherwise, too. As I guess the question, I, mean, I, I think I want to phrase the poll question is, do you th really think Truman was a mass murderer? Because I've thought about this for a long time, and I've also thought about, in more recent times, you know, take George W. Bush. Started a war on, I think, what we can all, anyone can agree at this point, we're on false pretenses. You know, there were, there were no weapons of mass destruction. Started a war which led to the deaths of hundreds of thousands of people. For which I think he's responsible. 
does that make him a mass murderer? Again, maybe not as direct as Truman with the ordering of the, 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 the atom bombs, but still, pretty direct. His, his decision, his willful command that, that, that made that happen. And I, 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 again, this is, this is more, this is the quandary I'm having, because I, I, you know, that's the thing about this, is that I don't think George W. Bush is really that bad of a, I voted for the SOB twice, <laughs> could not stomach uh, his opponents, but this is the thing it's hard maybe for us to, to fathom. We like Hitler because he makes sense as a, a villain. He's an awful person, he does awful things. You know, a decent person can do awful things. We know that in the abstract, but, you know, to think can it, can an otherwise decent person who Truman seems like, I don't really like Truman that much in any case, but it doesn't seem like Hitler, still do Hitler-like things. Because when Anscombe says he's a mass murderer, that's kind of what she's saying. And maybe it's just a consequence of the sort of power we've accrued as human beings to destroy that has led us to this point. It's kind of hard to think of it, you know, an ordinary person, a decent person, being a mass murderer. Um... So anyway, that was the question I had in my mind. That's, that's, that's all I had to say. So go over if you haven't. If you haven't been to uh, Spotify before, go over to uh, Controversies in Church History there. And uh, take a little poll. Let me know. I'll, I'll try to set it up so you can leave comments. You know, I'll give you the poll. Click on your answer. Tell me why you think he's, you know, Truman. Yeah, Truman's a mass murderer. This is why. Truman's not a mass murderer. This is why. Uh, Truman's guilty of murder, but, you know, that sort of thing. Um... You know, let me know what you think about this. It's kind of an interesting, well, interesting. It's a depressing topic, but I thought for this for this day, uh, something uh, Catholics should talk about and discuss. So uh, that is all for this episode. Again, uh, remember you can find us on on the web at churchconservation dot com uh, on social media at, um, at Facebook and Twitter and YouTube, and also on Patreon. Controversies in Church History. Just search for them all. You can find them there. If you would like to become a patron, you can. I think it's five, seven, ten dollars a month. You'll get some bonus material, which is coming. <laughs> there, there is bonus material coming uh, in terms of bonus episodes, and I am beginning to reach out to potential interviewees. There will be interviews. There will be video stuff, hopefully, for our Patreon folks as well. Get some of that stuff done for you. So we are beginning to move forward with the podcast. Hopefully, reach out to you guys more and start interacting more. Uh, in any case, uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you guys. Uh, have some fun discussing it. Take care. Uh, blessings to you all. And I'll hear from you soon. God bless. <laughs>